I've been debating whether I buy an iPad or not because supposedly when you're writing handwriting notes, you're you're learning better, you're retaining the information better. But I I don't I don't agree. I, I don't think that's true because I've been taking notes on my keyboard and I remember most of the stuff that I'm working with now. Granted, most of the stuff that I'm working with now and I am actually taking notes now is on YouTube videos and online with lectures and and articles and things like that, not in an actual lecture. So maybe the learning environments are a little bit different. But instead of just listening to people online say, oh yeah handwriting is better or keyboards are better. I decided to have a look at the research. That really hurt because I smacked my hand. Uh, and this is the research paper that I found. This is the one that seems to be cited the most. And it's called The Pen is Mightier Than the Keyboard. And what this is basically going to do is give you a narrative, <laughs> like like most papers. And obviously, I've read through this paper. I've taken notes. The yellow notes are my first run through. The red notes are the ones that I want to bring up in this conversation. So um, the, the, the point in the abstract tells you the sort of narrative this paper went with. The present research suggests that even when laptops are used solely to take notes, they they may still be impairing learning because their use results in shallower processing. Now I'm going to zoom in on, on this. This is a new tool, so apologies if I mess up. But shallower processing, what does that mean? That That's what I ask myself. What does shallower processing mean? Is that just shallower thinking, not thinking that much? I don't know. And it doesn't say in the paper either. So it's it's tries to use these words that I don't think we have a real answer for, like processing, encoding. They are ideas. They're processes that we think happen, but what we don't know happens. Um, and this is what they use to as, as a mechanism to argue for or against typing or not typing. So when we look at the background literature or the introduction, you may say, um, they, they, they start building out this narrative. So Conversely, students often self-report a belief that laptops in class are beneficial. Now, this self-report right here lends me the ideas that, okay, meta-ignorance, prior knowledge. For those of you familiar with the channel, I've explored this before, but we don't know what we don't know. There are unknown unknowns, and if we're self-reporting something, there could be massive personal misjudgments and self-assessments of our own abilities and what effective note-taking, learning, retention actually is. So... There, what, what these studies actually found, so I went, I went through these studies because I was having a look, is these studies found that the students didn't know what effective learning note-taking was. That's basically what they found. Um, and the belief that, uh, and this self-belief that laptops are beneficial is built from this misconception that, oh, we learn like this. So the self-belief is built from a misconception which they're building out a narrative from. So you're like, okay, you're building out a narrative from essentially the incompetence of students, but okay, yes, I'm a student. Yes, I was also incompetent. <laughs> I'm not calling you all out. Uh, and then the next point go, goes on to support this. Empirical research tends to support the professor's view, finding that students using laptops are not uh, on task during lectures. Now, what this is saying is laptops give affordances for students to get distracted. But if they didn't have a laptop, do you still think they would get distracted? Yes, they do. Um, and this is this is other research that they haven't put in here at all as like a, a critique at all or, or a conflict or anything like that. But students still get distracted. Students get distracted by things flying around, by people making noises, by just things going on in the lecture or them thinking about something and not being funny, but calling you out a little bit with the ADHD community, but they get distracted by anything and everything. So just because they have a laptop there doesn't mean like take away the laptop. They're not going to get distracted. That, that that just doesn't happen. They can stare out a window and still get distracted. I stare out a window and get distracted. I can stare at the floor and think about something random. Like, th this doesn't help your claim at all. It's just, in my eyes, it's just a biased narrative that you start to build, which is fine. Uh, that's just research. <laughs> um, ah, you, you can see my irritations with this paper. So, it, just, just for clarity, I am biased against, um, like, handwriting notes. I don't like handwriting notes. Just to clear that up. So the, the ideas that they brought in, the, the mechanisms, the theory, the, the research behind it, is they use the encoding hypothesis, again using like encoding. What is that? Encoding is part of processing. And when you look into cognitive science, neuropsychology, and all of the different areas of cognitive science and try to explain what encoding is, there are different models of what encoding is. It's basically a process that happens where you perceive information and then you encode it into your memory. Whether that's short-term, working, long-term, whatever model you're using of memories, that's what it's trying to do, but what that actually looks like and what actually happens, we don't know. It's a big black box. We don't really know. Um, so they're using a hypothesis, which is what it is, to 
uh, bol bolster their claims, which is fine because that's how science works. But that's what, I just want to make that clear. This is a hypothesis. It's not fact. It's what we think might be happening. Um, uh, and that processing that occurs during the act of note taking improves learning and retention. Now, what they could have said instead was practice helps learning and retention. And practice, we know, like it, it's a fact. We know practice helps learning and retention, whereas encoding, we don't know. So that's just something that they've, they've chosen to use. And then the external storage hypothesis um, touts that um, touts the benefits of the ability to review material. Now, I think this is fairly obvious that if you take notes and you can you can review them later on, note taking like having a physical thing is better than your biological memory um that's fairly fairly well like known it's pretty obvious and there there is a paper saying that yes it is un uncontroversial as they say in the paper you're like cool great obvious uh, next point <laughs> moving on real quick the more deeply information is processed here, here we go again more deeply information is processed during note taking, the greater the encoding benefits. So what they're saying is if you think it's better. Like, duh. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, I'm trying to understand why, like wh what, what the point is here. Like what they're basically saying is if you think you will learn better. Great, that's obvious. How does that relate to taking notes via keyboard or taking notes via like, pen and paper longhand i think is the term that they use and what they're trying to essentially find is longhand note taking requires more thinking than laptop note taking but doesn't that depend on the person because i can be a person taking notes on like by hand but i could be using shorthand and not really thinking about it just yeah yeah, yeah that's, that's fine and that's what i was doing in lecture all the well i say lecture that's what i was doing at school all the time i take notes i had no idea what i was writing with the notes i wasn't thinking about it i just copy what's on the board I'm not thinking at all. Then if I'm taking notes on my laptop, well, actually I wanna, oh no, that section's in another one, so I'm tabbing things up and moving things down. So I could be thinking more on a keyboard with tabs. So yeah, I, again, I think I think that claim is just very out there. And in the studies, that that's what they look to test. So the first study, participants were instructed to use their normal classroom note-taking strategy. So those prior beliefs, those misconceptions, those misunderstandings of what note-taking is that I brought up earlier. Yeah, we're not challenging those. We're just going to use those um, the strategy because experimenters were interested in how information was actually recorded in class lectures. Now, looking at co cognitive load theory from Sweller, what he suggests is that if you understand the information, so um, with here, information actually, actually recorded in class, if they understand the information, then the normal classroom note taking for them, so people that understand the information, will be more organized than those that don't understand it. So if you have a more competent person, thinking about meta recurrence, if you have a more competent person, their note taking will be more organized than someone that doesn't understand the information. So the normal classroom note taking is going to be different for everyone, unless you can somehow make it consistent, which they don't try to do. So again, this this isn't a, this is a bad bad study. I'm not like pooing on the study. I'm just saying like this is a critique that comes to mind when I hear this. I'm like normal. What what is normal? <laughs> is it just what they've been doing? Um, so yeah, so that, that was their procedure and this is what they found. So basically these people have watched videos, they've gone away, been distracted, come back and then taken some tests. And these are the results. This is what they found. Now, I want to say, I want to say up front that this, this graph right here, I think is misleading. I think it's misleading because a lot of people will see, oh, look, big, big, small, small. Um, and there's a bigger difference. Like this is positive. This is negative. These are z-scores. And if you don't know what a z-score means, then you can't really interpret this information accurately. So when people are saying, oh, yeah, look, there's there's a big difference. This is positive. This is negative. Yeah, but the, the swings could just be one or two points because they're z-scores because of understanding information. So when, when you see people or when I see people critiquing or, or using this graph, I'm like, mm, you, you haven't quite grasped what it means yet. But what they did find in this paper is that factual information was better. So you've got the laptop is there and there, and then you've got the shorthand is this one. So what they essentially found is that for factual information, there was no difference. There was no difference between using a laptop or going longhand. But what they did find is that it's beneficial for conceptual note taking in the questions that they asked. So things that were just trying to understand something. But when you're taking notes, we, we know when you're taking notes on a laptop, you're more likely to take verbatim notes, which they actually found and showed in this one. So in this paper, uh, in, in these results, you can see verbatim overlap. 
So if you're taking more verbatim notes, which are these, like the laptop, you're taking more verbatim notes, you're not thinking about the notes that you're taking. So you're not going to conceptually understand what's going on. So what they're saying here is verbatim note taking is bad for conceptual tests. Not that laptops are bad, just verbatim note taking is bad. Um, and that happened to be more frequent in the laptop note takers, potentially because of the affordance of the, of the environment. We'll, we'll get to that later. What they also found is laptop note takers, believe it or not, who would have thought it, um, write more. <laughs> like you can type quicker than you can write. So there were more words. I, I feel like that's an obvious result. Maybe, maybe, maybe it wasn't, but yeah, proof of concept maybe. So what they found is verbatim note taking. So not thinking about your notes is bad. Cool. Um, and laptop note taking, you take more notes. Cool. Right. Great. Obvious. Um, next. <laughs> uh, so what they, what they then tried to do is say, okay, right. This isn't significant yet. We haven't found any significant differences yet in note taking for uh, keyboards or typing. So what we're going to do is we're going to replicate the study. So you can see that they've now replicated the study, but what they're going to do <laughs> is add a simple instructional intervention which could reduce the negative effects of laptop note taking. So what they're going to do is they're going to tell someone not to take notes verbatimly. But you, I, I'm sure you know when you tell a kid, okay, don't do that. Are they going to do it? Yeah, of course they're going to do it. If you, if you tell an adult, don't do that. Are they going to do it? Yeah, they're still going to do it. Are they going to forget to do it? Yeah. <laughs> so this simple intra instructional intervention, when I read that, I was like, you're expecting one instruction to stop people from doing something that they're naturally doing, okay? Um, and this is this is what they this is what they said. This is what they said. They said we're doing a study about how information is conveyed in the classroom. Great. We'd like you to take notes on a lecture just like you would in class. People who take notes on laptops when they expect to be tested on the material later tend to, to transcribe what they blah 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 blah. So they're basically saying that you might transcribe. Please try not to do this. Try not to do this, right? Take notes in your own words. So what they're doing is saying, take notes the way that you want to, but don't take notes if it's like this. So immediately I'm going, okay, so how do I take notes? And they're saying, take notes in your own words. Okay, that's what I thought I was doing in the first place. And don't write down notes word for word. So you're asking someone to do something that they're not naturally used to doing. So they have to think about not doing what they want to do, which is using their words, which is using their encoding and their processing to make a decision about how they're taking notes. Is that really going to help? I don't think so. I, I don't think so at all. Um, and fun yeah, I mean, I know I found, I know I know the results or you know... Yes, I know the results, but that's what I was thinking when I was reading. I was like, that's not going to do anything. How is that going to help? Um, so I've just, I've just made a cut because I just made an absolute mess of all this rubbish. So what we, what we can see in these scores is this is a z-score. And this z-score, like the other graph, is a little bit misleading. Um, but there are some interesting results. So we have a laptop intervention and the no intervention. The no intervention is uh, this one. And the intervention is this one. So you can see with the factual information, there was a little bit of a difference. But the error bars are so big that there there might not be it, the sample size could change that. So again, this is a bit of a mm, not really sure. Here there is there is obvious results. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this one. Oops, pushing the wrong buttons. Uh, but what we can see here, which is kind of what I said to start with, this and this are basically the same. So the conceptual understanding of the laptop note taker was essentially the same. So the intervention looks like it did nothing. <laughs> It looks like it did nothing. And when we come down to what they were talking about and we have a look, we can see that, however, the intervention was completely ineffective at reducing verbatim content. So study two essentially is redundant and it just repeats study one. Uh, and the overall relationship between the verbatim content and negative performance held. So basically, like I say, this is a redundant study and just supporting that verbatim note taking is bad. Great. That, that doesn't support or uh, like that doesn't support handwritten or long form note taking at all. Um, so study three, let's, let's see if study three can do something different. So study three tries to do a similar thing to study two, but in, basically says increased external storage. Let's, let's zoom in. So increased external storage capacity could boost performance on tests taken after opportunity to study notes. So what they're doing is saying, well, laptop note takers take more, take more notes. So maybe that helps in their ability to study later on. Right. Okay. I like this idea. I like this way of thinking because handwritten notes, you're going to have less, right? So what was their procedure? 
what, what did they do to test this? They, they were told they would be returning the following week to be tested on the material. So they were told, okay, take notes on this. And then they were told you're going to be tested in a week or so on this material. Um, basically like every school environment. And then when participants returned, those in the study condition were given 10 minutes to study their notes before being tested. So the, the, the way I see this, right? The way I see this procedure is, okay, you're going to take notes on something. Then in a week's time, you're going to have 10 minutes to have a look at those notes and then try and understand it. Is that what I would use ecologically valid? Is that what people are likely to do? No. If they know they have a test, they're going to binge whatever it is, whatever notes that they have and try and understand what the thing is. They're not going to spend, oh yeah, I'm going to spend 10 minutes revising this stuff. I recognize that they, they want to try and um, have some sort of, what's the word? Dependent variable, like some sort of cutoff. But 10 minutes, 10 minutes, really? Is, is that it? Like why not an hour? Give them an hour. Because that way they can go through the notes and really critique and understand what the notes were. Because if their notes to start with, as we know, were verbatim and laptop people naturally, as you found, take verbatim notes, if not instructed otherwise or not taught or exposed to otherwise, then all they're going to do is read verbatim notes, which isn't going to make sense. So they're going to be reading notes, which you have already, which you, you've already said <laughs> won't make sense to them. And you're going to give them 10 minutes to study. How is that going to help? It's, anyway, anyway. Rant about, rant about the procedures. <laughs> um, and what did they find? Again, Z-scores results, a little bit misleading. And this is the graph I, I, I see more often um, on YouTube. And it says, oh yeah, look, longhand study note-taking is way better. And this is what people see. I'm like, great. So people that were taking notes, that were thinking about the notes they were taking, and then studying those notes that they were thinking, got the best results. Who would have guessed? They practiced and they, and they were thinking. The two things that we know helps note-taking. But that has nothing to do with like longhand or laptop note taking. <laughs> it's just they thought about it. You need to have laptop note takers that are thinking and then compare them with the longhand note takers that are thinking and then get them to study. That's more accurate. Anyway, um, small, small rant. Made another cut because I zoomed in and realized you couldn't actually see what was going on. So what, what we can see here is the table of the results. And this table of results is much more useful than this Z graph up here. So what this is finding is no surprise. Um, <laughs> We, we we have longhand studies. So if you think about something and you practice it, you're good. Um, great, you get good results. Kind of expected. Longhand, no study, 19.4. Long laptop, no study, 20.6. So laptop study, uh, laptop note taking was better than longhand note taking, which goes against the findings that they found in the first study, sort of, because when you look at the factual results, yes, these factual results are better than these factual results. Because 3.8, 3.7, I mean, that's a marginal difference. And when you look at the error bars, and like 3.1, 2.8, there's really no significant difference there. So the significant difference is the conceptual only. But the conceptual only here says laptop is better than longhand, which goes against study one. Study one said that conceptual note taking is better for a conceptual testing is better with handwritten notes. So the study three goes against study one, but they don't mention that. And I'm like, actually, my head against the wall. Anyway, um, and then when you look at the laptop study, the laptop study is actually worse than both of these. Why is that? Again, I think that is because the laptop study, they've taken verbatim notes and then they're reading these verbatim notes that they don't understand. So the things that they met, that they thought they understood, which we can see here, they think they understand something. Then they go to the verbatim notes and then they get confused because they don't understand what the notes are saying. And now they have what's called um, uh, cognitive dissonance. They, they are disagreeing in their head. They're having conceptual change. They're like, I don't know which one's right, which one's wrong. Maybe they took the notes poorly because they haven't been instructed how to take notes um, effectively. So maybe naturally you take notes in a certain way through handwriting that is more effective. But why can't we do, why can't we help people on a laptop do that? So, and those are the studies that aren't, aren't shown here. So in, in here, hope, hopefully that's sort of like given a bit of light that laptop and longhand, that there, there isn't anything in the study that supports longhand or laptop apart from longhand, you may naturally take notes in a more effective way, but we don't know what effective way is. Um, and when, when we look at the general discussion, this is what they were saying. We found that participants using laptops were more inclined to take verbatim notes. Okay. We found no difference in performance on factual questions in the first two studies, uh, though we do not discount the possibility that with a greater power difference. So basically, with more power, there might be a difference, but we, we don't know. 
For conceptual items, however, our findings strongly suggest the opposite conclusion, basically saying that conceptual finding, uh, conceptual studies, uh, conceptual tests are better with good notes, not loads of notes, good effective notes, which is supported by this, like conceptual notes. As, lo as long as the, the notes are useful, then they're good for conceptual understanding. Uh, and then, indeed, synthesizing and summarizing content rather than verbatim transcription can serve as a desirable difficulty towards improved educational outcomes. Basically, think about something, synthesize it, and practice. Doesn't matter whether you're doing that on paper or on a keyboard. It really doesn't matter. It's the process that you're doing and the process that you're intaking. So the takeaway notes for me is I'm still going to use my keyboard. I'm not going to an iPad to do handwriting notes. And as long as I can like pause the lecture and take appropriate notes, I'm good. So to summarize what they found is the handwriting notes or long form notes may be naturally giving people more opportunities to process or think about their notes. But when we when we look at what we're taught in school, from my experience anyway, most people are taught writing and, and how to write in English, which is handwriting notes, how to write notes on a page and on paper. I don't see many people inside of school being taught how to take notes on a laptop or writing on a laptop. That's just from my experience anyway. And I would imagine because they did this in lecture, the students would be around my age, maybe two, three years younger. So they haven't had as much experience using laptops for notes, for writing. And the experience is all that they do in their own time, which is playing games or using a computer for other computer stuff rather than actual study. So the experience people have writing notes is from their English class or English lessons, writing on uh, writing in books and maths and things like that, rather than taking notes on a computer. So if you have education about how to take notes on a computer with a keyboard, maybe they then think more about how they're taking notes, because that's from my experience. When I went into this note taking world and learned how to take notes on a computer, it's way easier now because I can search for things. I can find things. And you just saw in the video, I'm taking notes on Zotero, moving them over to Obsidian, which link in the description if you're interested about all of my notes. And I can't do that with paper at all. So all of the struggles and issues that I have with paper, I don't have with technology. So yeah, I'm, I'm not going over to an iPad because I don't see any benefit for taking handwritten notes and I'm taking notes on a computer perfectly fine. And when you're taking notes handwritten, there isn't really much of a benefit from what I can see. But it'd be interesting to hear your thoughts in the comment section below.